natural resources are basically everything on the Earth's surface and around it. Now, all of this is categorized into two categories. A, the living or the biotic category, that's plants, birds, animals, microbes. And then the second category is the non-living or the abiotic category. We'll look at the non-living category a little more. The non-living category can be further categorized into three spheres. And uh, the first sphere is the atmosphere. That's basically the air that surrounds the Earth. The second layer is the lithosphere. This is the land on the Earth's crust. The next is the hydrosphere. Hydro meaning water. So this is all the water on the Earth's surface and in the atmosphere. In this video, we'll be focusing on the atmosphere and the air. So here's the Earth and here's the atmosphere around the Earth. How high do you think the atmosphere extends? Turns out the height of the atmosphere is 10,000 kilometers. You might have wondered why the atmosphere sticks around the Earth and doesn't move away into space. Well, the answer is the Earth's gravitational pull holds the atmosphere in place. You might be wondering what the atmosphere really does. Why do we need it? Well, uh, it regulates the temperature of the Earth. It ensures that the Earth doesn't become too hot during the day, nor too cold at night. And of course, it provides oxygen for breathing. It provides various gases necessary for life processes. Let's look at the layer of the atmosphere that is closest to the Earth. This layer is called the troposphere. The troposphere is only 10 kilometers in height. This is very, very thin as compared to the total height of the atmosphere, which is 10,000 kilometers. It's interesting that 80% of the air of the atmosphere is in this layer. It's also interesting that all the clouds are in this layer and all the life, all the birds, all the microorganisms that are living are mostly in this layer. So what is the atmosphere made up of? Which gases are there in the atmosphere? Oxygen? Is that the majority? Let's find out. Turns out that 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen, 21% oxygen and 1% of other gases. This is further split up into 0.9% of argon, 0.03% of carbon dioxide and 0.0% of other gases. What is air pollution? Releasing harmful contaminants into the atmosphere is air pollution. These contaminants can be of different types. It could be poisonous gases like sulfur dioxide or it could be something like carbon monoxide or nitrogen oxides. These gases are very harmful if inhaled. They could cause diseases like asthma. They could even cause death if inhaled in very large quantities. The other type of pollutants that we have are particulate matter. Particles like construction dust and unburnt carbon can also, inha uh, can also cause issues with the lungs when inhaled. The third type of pollutant that we have are greenhouse gases. Gases like carbon dioxide and methane don't really trouble us too much if we inhale them, but they do contribute to global warming. What's global warming? Basically, a general increase in the temperature on the Earth's surface is called global warming. Next, we'll go through a few common causes of air pollution and how we can solve them. The single largest reason for air pollution in our country is industries. 51% of the air pollution in our country is just due to industries. So what can we do to reduce this effect? One thing we could do is have stricter regulations. Another thing we could do is ask factories to install chimney filters so that harmful gases don't enter the atmosphere. The other thing we could do to save ourselves is to move residential areas and factories away from each other. The other common cause of air pollution in villages is burning waste and cattle dung for cooking and other domestic purposes. Now, uh, while this is very economical, it does cause a lot of harm to the atmosphere. So what would one, should one do? We could use LPG or Gober gas for cooking. We could use the dung instead for manure, which is very, very useful. We could also recycle the paper and cardboard so that it could be used more effectively. In this picture, we see farmers burning stubble. While this could be a quick way to get rid of stubble, burning stubble isn't good for the farm, nor is it good for those around. 
So what should we do with stubble? Stubble could be used as fodder for animals. Stubble could be used to make biofuels, manure, biogas. Stubble could also be used to make roofing for homes and cattle sheds. Exhaust gases are a major cause of pollution in cities. 20 to 30% of urban air pollution is because of vehicular exhausts. So what can we do? Always use public transport whenever it's possible. The less number of vehicles on the road, the less pollution we have. The other thing vehicle owners must do is ensure that they do regular pollution checks and ensure that their vehicles are in good running condition. This can go a long way in reducing pollution in our cities.